Hi everybody, Grandad here again. And what am I up to today? Well today I'm taking another look at some of my books. Now the book I want to show you today is this one. Now it's quite a remarkable book this, although it doesn't look much. It's very thin, in fact it's only got about 15 pages in it, but it's written by a very uh, clever artist. Now you may have seen this book before, I don't know, I'll bring it in and show you. And it's called Masquerade. That's the title of the book and it's written by Kit Williams. Now Kit Williams is a remarkable uh, artist I suppose you'd call him, an author, as well as other things. Um, but it looks like a child's book. But this really wasn't a child's book at all. It was a book meant for adults and it's full of the most amazing pictures. I can just open it up to the first picture and show you this first picture in this book. You'll see it's very detailed and it's very well painted. I mean it's absolutely wonderful. And each picture in this book because it's a it's a puzzle book and uh, if you could solve the puzzle of this book you could get a very valuable prize because this book led you to a treasure. Now Kit Williams decided that he'd write this book and he'd put clues in it as to the location of where he'd buried a golden hare. Now we've got a picture of the golden hare on the back here and if you look there, there it is. It's made of 18 karat gold and it's absolutely encrusted with precious gems. Rubies, sapphires and all sorts of precious gems in there. It does tell you mother of pearl, citrines, turquoise and it's very beautiful. Now Kit Williams actually buried this uh, jewel somewhere in Great Britain and uh, to make sure that it was genuine he took somebody with him a very prominent uh, person that would be believed and he actually took a chap by the name of uh, Bamba Gascoigne. Now Bamba Gascoigne was a television presenter on a program called University Challenge. It was on some years ago in fact this book is about 30 years old because he actually published it in 1979 so it's almost 40 years old this book and uh, Bamba Gascoigne was, was a popular person on the television at that time so he got him to witness the burying of this book uh, of this jewel that's uh, mentioned in this book now he buried it deep enough so that metal detectorists wouldn't find it he put it too deep for them and the only way you could find this treasure was to follow the clues laid down in this book. Now, one thing you'll notice in this book is each, each one of the pictures has got a quite an elaborate frame around the outside. And uh, also, uh, it's got writing on it. And on the writing, one of the letters every now and then on each side is picked out in red. Now in this case it's the A, the R, the E and the, and the H. Now that spells Earth, I think. I think that spells... What's this? A-R-E-H. Or is it air? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, picked out in red. That gives you a clue. Also hidden in these pictures is uh, a hare. Now I'm very fond of hares. It's one of my favourite animals. And in fact, if I show you just here, if I can find it. I've got a little hare here. Because I'm very fond of hares. I've got one myself, a little tiny 
copper hare. Because I think they're wonderful animals, they're my favourite animal and I've got lots of models of hares and pictures of hares and I'm quite fond of them. And uh, it's quite funny because they say he's mad as a March hare and I get a bit mad occasionally so uh, it, it's, a good, it's a good animal for me to have. But each one of these pictures, hidden in the picture, is a hare. And this one on this first page is hidden in this mountain at the back. If you look it looks like a hare lying down, you can just see his eyes in the side there. So by looking at these pictures in this book and there's another one, absolutely wonderfully painted. And Kit has done the same, he put a, a frame all round with clues. And there's another hare, the chap in the middle playing the violin, has got hare feet and ears of a hare. So there's a hare hidden in this picture. And it goes all through each page. There's a big hare on that one. But the hidden part is the fact that he stood on a... On a uh, a rock which has got eyes so it looks like a frog and uh, again it's got a border with letters and a saying and letters picked out as clues to where this hair is hidden now I'm sure that uh, about 12 months after this book was published someone managed to solve the riddle of the book and discover exactly where the hair was buried and they went and dug it up and of course they claim the prize so it's not out there anymore but this book caused mayhem because uh, not only were people interested in it they went crazy for it and Kit must have sold an awful lot of these books as a result because everybody likes a treasure a treasure hunt and especially when there's something valuable to be had and it really caught the public's imagination but the trouble was as he said here he didn't bury it on private land or in someone's garden or uh, you know somewhere where you wouldn't be allowed to dig but people didn't take any notice of that they went digging all over the place and they thought they found clues in the book and uh, they went digging and they dug up people's gardens and went into private property and caused all sorts of problems um, but that was uh, part of the fun of it I suppose but anyway eventually somebody did find the, the treasure and they claimed the golden hair now I don't know where it is now but whoever owns that golden hair they're really lucky now as I said, it's not really a children's book. It was designed for, for people because a child would never work out. I mean, I wasn't able to work out how, uh, how this, the clues in this book worked. I mean, I tried and tried, but I couldn't work it out. I wasn't clever enough. And you need to be really clever to understand some of the clues. Now, if you go onto the internet and ask about this book, The Masquerade and Kit Williams, you'll find that there are videos and uh, various things you can look up which will tell you the answers to all these clues or at least some of the answers, because, uh, I mean, only Kit Williams knows the truth about it, and uh, he probably didn't tell anybody, so it's still a bit up in the air as to what these clues mean, but I think someone did eventually find the, the golden hair, and it's not there anymore, unfortunately. But the pictures are absolutely wonderful. Kit Williams is a really good artist. Now, I, uh, I've got some pictures here of Kit Williams. I'll show you another picture in a minute, but I'll show you this one first on my phone. Now that's a picture of Kit Williams. Oh, this always happens for me. Picture never stays. There's a picture of Kit Williams. He's looking a bit stern there, but he's a strange sort of a chap. Now he not only did uh, pictures and books, but uh, he made things, moving objects. And this is a picture of one in this, this other picture I'm going to show you. That's a picture of something else that he made, and I believe it's in a shopping centre somewhere, I'm not quite sure where. But it's got a duck on the top, and it's got a mechanical clock underneath, and at the bottom there's a fish. Now apparently this uh, thing has been restored just recently, and it's now working again. But what happens every hour or so, the uh, fish blows bubbles out. <laughs> so it's very entertaining, and wherever it is, which I, I just can't remember, but somewhere, and if you look up Kit Williams you'll find out all about that. That's another thing, a bit like Heath Robinson, he used to make these machines that uh, do things. Now, that's the Masquerade book, and uh, I recommend you, you try and get hold of this and look on the internet and uh, find out all about it. But uh, after the success of this book, Kit thought, oh, I'm obviously onto a good idea here. People like puzzles and they like doing things. So he decided to write another book. Now, because of the trouble that this 
book caused with people digging up on private property and wrecking people's gardens trying to find the the prize he thought i won't do that again i won't make that mistake although other people have tried it i think somebody decided they'd bury golden eggs around the country and that caused mayhem as well and one or two other people have tried a similar idea which probably worked because people will, will, will go for anything with it where there's a prize to be had and a treasure treasure to be solved so he decided that he'd write another book and I've got it here and again it's a very thin book again there's only about 15 pages in it and it's full of pictures that Kit has done which I'll show you in a minute now looking at this book straight away you'll see there's something strange about it although it's got Kit Williams on the front there there's no title this book has no title now what Kit decided to do and I'll show you another picture of him he's on the back here holding his book in his hands and he's sitting there he looks a bit even stranger there he's got a hat on and in the background you'll see a beehive that'll become uh, interesting in a minute when I get on with the story but he put this uh, book inside a box so it looks like it's in a box there but he actually made a proper box for it and you also got a golden bee on the front there's a golden bee there so that was valuable in itself but if you've got a book and it's a first edition they're usually valuable now this book if it had a title in fact the only book with a title is the one that he put in that box would be really valuable so that was the prize for this second uh, puzzle that he decided to do now what he did was uh, he hid in the pictures in this book and there's the first one first picture he hid clues in the same way as he did in his first book but these were slightly more easy to find because finding the clues in this book was only part of the problem the only part the way to solve the problem now in this particular picture on the front here I don't know whether you can see it it's not doesn't show up terribly well in in these films but if you look on the tunic of this gentleman in the middle here there is actually a bird upside down I don't know whether I can turn it upside down you can see it better I don't know whether it will or not but if you look on that tunic you may be able to see there's a bird now that bird is a sort of a parity type bird but I think it's a toucan because the first letter of the uh, name of this book begins with T so I think that's a toucan now if you go on to the next picture same sort of thing wonderfully made picture all done by kit the frame as well it's got bees on it so bees feature in this one as well and uh, the actual hidden creature in this one is even more difficult to find it took ages for me to find this one but it's up in the trees here and it's a little fish but it's a particular type of fish it's not just an ordinary fish it's a heron so the second letter was probably H now when you go on if you continue doing this in this one another very beautifully made frame and picture with people hidden in a tree um, there's a bird up in the uh, trees there you can't see because he's upside down but, but believe me there's a bird hidden in that picture and when you know it's there you can see it quite plainly but it's not easy to see so that's another letter in the clue and this goes all the way through the book <clears throat> now once you found all the uh, the letters from the, the animals in this book there's another wonderful picture there and the animal in this one is an elephant and he's up in the uh, trees there up on the hill built into the hill there's an elephant now once you would found all the clues you had to get all the first letters of each of these animals once you worked out what what the actual <laughs> first letter was it wasn't easy there was it was a puzzle all right you had to fiddle around with it and the names of some of these animals sometimes it was the kind of thing a bird or or a fish and sometimes it was a type of bird and type of fish anyway eventually if you were clever enough you could work out what the title of this book was so that may seem that it's not very difficult to do but there was a snag 
what you had to do, and if you read this uh, instructions on the back here, it tells you that what you, you've got is a year and a day to send back to Kit the answer to the riddle of what the name of this book was, the title of this book. Um, some You had to convey to him uh, the title of the book, but you weren't allowed to use the written word. You had to find some other way of doing it. And he gave you a year and a day to do it. So there's plenty of time for people to work on projects and things uh, to be able to send back the answer that most people solve quite easily. That wasn't the, really the problem. The problem was finding something that would convey the message back. Now because I like making things and uh, I decided I'd try and enter into this competition because I discovered the clues and uh, found out what the title of the book is and uh, so I decided to make something but being the strange as, <laughs> being as strange as I am I didn't do it the easy way I made something rather difficult and I thought Kit Williams might be interested in something that took a lot of, wo a lot of work uh, and was a puzzle in itself because he likes puzzles he does puzzles all the time and I thought it might ap appeal to him if I sent it back to him in the form of a puzzle. Now I thought I'd do sort of a jigsaw puzzle but I thought well maybe a jigsaw puzzle's too easy maybe I've got to make it more complicated so to begin with I decided that I would make the pieces of the puzzle a lot different to puzzles that you have normally. Normally you have a jigsaw puzzle and it has pieces which are relatively all the same. They've got two notches and two lumps on them so they lock together and you have a picture. So I thought there'll be no picture and there'll be no locking together to make it more difficult. Now to make it even more difficult for myself I decided that I would uh, use a different form of manufacture. I thought I would manufacture the pieces of this jigsaw puzzle in a more more creative way. I thought this might appeal to Kit if he looked at it he might say well this chap has really uh, gone to town on this and, and spent a lot of time working this out. So what I did the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle and I've got one here and I'll just show you and this particular piece is a moth because the moths featured in the book. Now this is a moth. Now what I did to make this moth is quite thick as a piece of a jigsaw puzzle but what I did to make this moth I actually made it out of layers I made, I found a material which I've since looked for and I can't find it anymore they obviously don't manufacture it anymore because I can't find it anymore but at the time you could buy layers of plastic very thin just like paper almost as thin as paper a little bit thicker than sort of a light card and uh, by using a bit of thinners you could stick these pieces of plastic together. So what I did, I got uh, pieces of this plastic and laminated them together, one on top of the other, all different colours. And then to make the pattern of the little butterfly here, I uh, cut through the red one, because the red's on the top, I cut through the red one to reveal the blue one underneath. So the blue parts of this are actually lower than the red parts and then the green parts are below the blue. So you end up with a sort of a cameo done in the same way as a cameo would be where people carve shell and rock and something. So you end up with a sort of a three-dimensional shape. Now this was very difficult to do I must tell you and it took me hours to uh, design and, and make each one of these little creatures. There's a, a few patterns as well just scratched into the surface of the plastic to make up the details of this little butterfly. Now when I'd finished each one they were uh, a bit rough and bit rough and ready and dull. They'd lost their shine because the plastic was shiny but when I started but by the time I'd uh, machined it and done all the bits and pieces to it it was dull. But I found that if you painted it with the thinners that stuck it together it actually made it shiny again and smooth. So you end up with these little creatures picked out in this plastic in a three-dimensional way like a cameo and they were nice and shiny. So what I did was make 
all the little animals that were in Kit's book. And I've made them here and you can see them all laid out. There's 15 animals in there. All different ones. So that was uh, one part of what I was going to do. Now the whole thing that I've got here resembles, when it's all put together, the, uh, and the lid on the top, like that, it resembles a beehive. It doesn't look much like it now because the box is 40 years old and it's got a bit tatty. But when I first made it, it looked a bit like a beehive with boxes on top of boxes on top. So uh, that was the idea. And uh, in each layer of this beehive, you've got a different section to the puzzle which I'd made. Now, I thought that uh, have, having made this puzzle, that uh, people may not know, or Kit might not know, how it all goes together. So I decided to write a little poem, a sort of a poem, on the lid of the box. And I've got this poem here and I'll just read it to you and it might explain exactly what I'm going on about. It says, inside the beehive lies a prize that I am seeking. A world within a world creatures secretly are keeping. To unfold life's mysteries brings pleasure to my mind. For nature through the seasons many treasures you will find. I've sent to you my beehive and a puzzle you must solve. With help from all your creature friends, the answer will evolve. Open up the beehive and see what lies within, and remove each section one by one and laying them about, and when you've reached the base where to start, you must find out. All things start at the beginning. Let your book be your guide. The creatures are there to help you. Where to put them, you decide. And when the creatures are complete, some spaces you will see, to fit them will be easy and will come quite naturally. Within all pieces fitted in, the magic tree will turn, and when the bees take flight, the secrets you'll, dis you'll soon learn. The world that you are creating, like all worlds, it must turn, and this world turns over the title you'll discern. So that's telling him what he's got to do. He's got to follow the instruction, the, the creatures in his book, and uh, using the layers of this uh, beehive, as I said, those are the creatures, and these are the spaces which it mentions. And this is the base. Now this base looks a little bit strange, because each one contains a sort of a picture. It's not a very good, I mean, it's no, nowhere near as good as uh, Kit's. It wasn't meant to be. I'm not an artist, so I wasn't going to try and compete with Kit on his painting. But it looks very childlike, and that's all right, I don't mind. But here's the base, and the base is in the form of a sort of box. Sort of box arrangement. It's got an edge around the side, and it's got a plastic bottom. And of course, you can't see anything on the bottom. It doesn't look like anything. Now, if you look at this uh, frame, you'll see that on the frame here, if I can show you carefully, you'll see there's some little bees. And believe me, these took ages to make, because each one of these bees has got wings, and the wings actually move. When you pull on the wings, they open. And each one of them bee wings is made out of three layers of that plastic, which I was telling you about. And there's four little bees, all exactly the same on this frame. So I'll leave them closed up for the moment. Now, following the book, to be your guide, as it said on the instructions, you must use the animals, which is mentioned in Kit's book. And I've got them here, all 15. Now the first clue in the book, as we saw, was a toucan. Now another thing which I didn't show you, but on each one of these animals, if you look at them carefully, you'll see there's a bit missing. On the toucan, for instance, some of his tail is missing. And on the horse, which is just here, his tail is missing. There's also a tail missing off the little uh, Bambi or Mount Jack, as it turned out to be. And uh, 
the mouse in the middle here has got an ear missing. Now those are clues as to how this puzzle goes together. Now we know in the book that it takes the toucan to start. So if I get the toucan out, now I have to look on this uh, frame to see where the toucan will fit. And I'll just pick up the frame now so it make it easy for you to see. Now if you look on this frame all the way round, down at this bottom corner here, there's some feathers, or what looks like feathers. And when you take the toucan and fit him in, he fits into that corner almost perfectly. I mean he's quite easy to fit in and that completes his feathers so the toucan is there. Now the next creature in the book is a fish. Now, if we take, there's two fish here so you have to make sure you choose the right one. I didn't make it too easy. If you take this little fish which has got the fin missing and look where he can be placed you'll look that on the toucan, on his beak He's got a little triangular bit at the front there. And if you put the fish in, he sits there and the beak of the toucan makes up the fish. Finishes the fish off and gives him a fin so he can swim. Now, the next creature that fits in is... Uh, let me think now. The next one that fits fits in is uh, the mouse, I believe. No, maybe not the mouse. Is uh, now th I made this puzzle, and even I can't do it. So you can tell how difficult it is. You have to know which creature comes next, and I just can't remember for offhand. I think it might be the horse, actually. No, it's not the horse. Anyway, I'll never get this video finished if I don't crash on. Now, each one, you'll have to take my word for it, that each one of these animals fits into this puzzle by looking at what's missing off the animal and fitting it together. Now, I'll fit it in quickly because I don't want this video to go on too long. So I'll just fit the creatures in, not necessarily in the right order. If you wanted to do it properly, you'd have to do it in the right order. So you have the...